So let's say I had a force field one half x y i plus one fourth x squared j. All right, and we want to figure out. We're going to find the work. done by the given force field on a particle that moves from the point zero zero Two, one, one along each path. Okay, and here are the different paths that we're going to look at. We're going to look at the path C sub 1, where y equals x. The path C sub 2, where x equals y squared. And the path C sub 3, where y equals x cubed. Okay, and so for each one of these, we have a, uh, a different graph like to illustrate what we're actually doing. And I'll show you these real quick. So here's the, the path for the first one here. Here's the path for the second. Here's the path for the third one here. Yeah. I'm drawing these really quick and then I'm pasting them over. Now this is around page 1065. This is actually the beginning of the next section, but it kind of it's not really new material. It's just kind of relating what we've already done uh, to an applica you know, in an application problem. All right, so we have this this force field, all right? And here's the formula for the force field. And then we have some particle that's traveling from 0, 0 to 1, 1 along these different paths. Now, there's, these are three different ways to get from 0, 0 to 1, 1 with uh, these equations here. And we're going to figure out the work done by the force field on the particle as it moves from 0, 0 to 1, 1. Okay? So, before we can do anything, though, um, note that the force field is conservative, right? And the way that you can tell that F is conservative, if you remember, um, what's in front of the I, that can be your M, and what's in front of the J is your N, and so if the partial derivative of m, partial derivative of m with respect to y is equal to the partial derivative of n with respect to x, then the force field is conservative. So let's see. 
if you did if you did that what would you get partial derivative of m with respect to y would be one half x right partial derivative of m with respect to y equals one half x partial derivative of n with respect to x would be one half x okay All right, so for these different paths, of course, the um, formula that we use for the path is going to be different. Do you remember the formula for the path? It was something like, let me go back to where we started line integrals. R of t equals x of t i plus y of t j where t is between a and b. r of t equals x of t i plus y of t j. All right, that's from 15.2, uh, the very beginning. So we need to figure out for each one of these, c sub 1, c sub 2, and c sub 3. Of course, this is three different problems. All right. So for c sub 1, where y equals x r of t equals we're going to have something times i plus something times j and we're going from 0, 0, 2, 1, 1 so the easiest way to change from 0 to 1 with the equation y equals x is just to let x of t be equal to t. And the same for y, y of t equal t. So when t equals 0, this would be 0, 0. And when t equals 1, this would be 1, 1. All right? And x and y are equal, right? We have to, this equation also has to meet those conditions there or has to those have to be equal because of the equation if this was y equals x squared then I wouldn't be able to use that because y isn't equal to x squared but y does equal x here so we're all good okay so what would and this is for for t greater than or equal to 0 less than or equal to 1 Okay, so what is r prime of t? The reason why we need that is for the formula for work, which you may or may not remember from your physics class. Um, that is one of those optional sections that I believe we did not cover. Um, let me bring that up really quick in your book so you can kind of get the formula that we're going to use. Let me see if it's in here. Well, it's not in the same form that we would use. So I'll just give you the formula for work. Anyway, we need to find the derivative here. So that's going to be what? Just, oh, what's the derivative, not the integral? That's going to be i plus j. And both of those, you know, it's, it's i dt and j dt. So it's i plus j dt. All right. Now, what was our force field formula? Let's see. Our force field formula, I'm going to write this over to the side. You can probably just look up on your page. Our force field is f of xy equals 1 half xy plus 1 fourth 
x squared j. All right, the formula that we have to use for work is work equals the line integral over c sub 1 of f times, or dotted with, dr. Was the eyelet open on purpose? Mm. Where did I leave an eye off? Oh, no it wasn't. Right there. It's x, y, i. Sorry. All right. So, if we are integrating this along c sub 1, how can I rewrite this function in terms of t? What is x equal to in terms of t? And what is y equal to in terms of t? Just t, right? For both of those, x equals t, y equals t. So our force field function here that we're going to integrate is going to be 1 half. If x is t and y is t, that's going to be 1 half t squared i plus 1 fourth t squared, right, because if, you, if x is t, that's t squared j. Where did you find that x and y would be? From here. Well, when we wrote our, our path there. All right. So I did say times, but that is dotted with right there. I mean, if we're dealing with vectors, if it was just times, it would just be like that. But if you ever see this, you know, usually that's dot product. All right, so what is that going to equal for us? Um, dot product, remember, we only have, it's only going to be like one answer, right? Because a dot product, generally, a dot product, if we're doing vectors, gives us a scalar, or just one number. All right, so this is just going to be the integral of just one thing. All right, so we need to take the dot product of, oh, and by the way, what is dr? dr is our prime, so don't let that confuse you. That's the same, that's the same thing. The derivative of r, that's r prime of t. So we want to take the dot product. It's going to be 1 times 1 half t squared. All right, this is going to be the integral of 1. I got the 1 from right here. Times 1 half t squared from there plus 1 times 1 fourth t squared. All right. I got the ones from right here because it's okay. it's f, which is this, dotted with dr. So what is that going to equal? The integral of what's 1 half plus 1 fourth? 3 fourths t squared dt. All right, now this is over c sub 1. What are the boundaries for c sub 1? t equals 0 to 1, right? So that's our integral from 0 to 1. Okay, so integrate. So it's going to be t to the third over 3, right? t to the third over 3 will leave you with 1 fourth t to the third evaluated from 0 to 1 is just going to equal 1 fourth. So the work done is just 1 fourth. 
Now, I don't, I'm not sure about units. Don't worry about that. So that's the work done on a particle that travels this path, the path y equals x, from 0, 0 to 1, 1. Okay. So let's look at the next path. Let's look at the path c sub 2 where x is equal to y squared. Alright, so we have to figure out the path that the particle would travel if going from 0, 0 to 1, 1. So whatever we use, it needs to work out for t equals 0 and get 0, 0. And for t equals 1, we want to get 1, 1. And it's going to be x of t times i plus y of t times j. So I'm pretty sure, I mean, think of some property where if you took the square root of 0, you'd get 0. But the square root of 0 squared will give you 0. Well, I just told you what to use, so I don't even know. You know, I said square root. I look at this right here, and I think, okay, if I let this x be just t, so if I let this be t i plus square root of t j. All right, so this does fit this property here, or this equation here, right? x is equal to y squared. If this is x and this is y, y squared would be x, right? If you square that, you get x. This isn't the only equation you could use, but it's probably the simplest equation you could use. All right, for t is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 1. All right, if you plug in a 0 for t, you get 0, 0. If you plug in a 1 for t, you get 1, 1. And it also reflects the property here, this path, x equals y squared. Could you say t squared plus t to the fourth? Maybe. I mean, that looks like that would work, but. Yeah, it has to fit the x equals y squared. Just like when we were doing the parametricization, it has to fit that, that equation. All right. And so I want to do the same thing. I want to change my f of xy to f of x of t y of t. So we're staying from zero to one on all three. On all three, we're going from zero to one. It's just a different path. Okay, okay. We're taking a different path each time to get there. Alright, so this we're using this same deal here. I might have to figure out that. And I need R prime of T. I'll take the derivative down there in a second. But so it's gonna be one half times all right so x is t and y is t to the one half so that's going to be t to the three halves i plus one fourth all right and then that's going to be t squared j All right, let's find dr, which is the derivative of r of t. All right, so that's going to be 1i, and then that's going to be what? 1 half t 
t to the negative one half. All right, that's t to the one half, so the derivative is one half t to the negative one half. So that's actually you could write that as one over two times the square root of t. That's t to the negative one half in the numerator. It would be t to the positive one half in the denominator. Okay. And so our work is going to equal the line integral over c sub 2 of our f of x of t, y of t, dotted with the dot product of that and our dr. All right, so that's going to be, we're going to take this up here, our function, capital F, in terms of x of t, y of t, and we're going to take the dot product of that and dr. So, it's going to be this here times 1, so that's 1 half t to the 3 halves, plus One fourth t squared times, you might want to leave that t to a negative power, right? So that'll be one half t to the negative one half. So if you say t to the one half times t squared, that's going to give you t to the three halves. And what about the number part? We have one fourth times one half. It's one eighth. All right, so that's four eighths and one eighth, so it's going to be five eighths t to the three halves dt. All right, and our boundaries again are the same t equals zero to one. All right, so that's going to be five eighths times two-fifths t to the five-halves. All right, so you can see that's going to be one-fourth t to the five-halves evaluated from zero to one, which is going to, again, equal one-fourth. All right, this one-fourth, plug in a one, plug in a zero, you still get one-fourth. Now let's look at the third path, y equals x cubed. Okay, we're going to do the same thing. First, let's find the path. So remember we're going from 0, 0, 2, 1, 1, and it needs to fit this formula here. Remember, you can always adjust the t if you want to. It doesn't have to be 0 to 1. It could be 0 to 2, 0 to 3, 0 to 4. It could take longer um, if it will help you with your equations. But we need to come up with some path that will work out with this equation and with both of these. So let's try, let's see if this works, ti plus the cube root of tj. So will y equal x cubed? So if this is y,
Okay, so the cube root of t times i times tj. So, so for one, 0, 0, this works out. For 1, 1, this works out. And if you cube x, you get y. And this would be t between 0 and 1. Now, we're going to work it out like this. Um, another way that you could do if you wanted to change the t, I'm going to write it up here. You don't have to write this down. Is that you could let r, let's see, you could let r of t equal, this is a little harder to figure out, 1 half ti plus 1 eighth t cubed j and let t be between 0 and 2. And if you plug in a 0, you get 0, 0. If you plug in a 2, you get 1, 1. And if you take this 1 half t and you cube it, you get y. That's just another idea. Okay. You can, we should get the same answer, though. Okay, and I'll tell you because uh, I know the answer for this one worked out like, like that right there, but I'm just going to erase that real quick. All right, so what will our f of x of t, y of t be equal to? So we're using that same f from before, the uh, 1 half xy plus 1 fourth x squared or one half x y i so that's going to be x times y t to the first and t to the one third one half t to the four thirds i plus one fourth x squared so one fourth the third squared is going to be two-thirds, right? So two-thirds j. All right. Our prime of t. That's going to be one over three t to the two-thirds. Is that right? So you'd say one-third times t to the one-third minus one power would be negative two-thirds. So that is t to the negative two-thirds. Keep that in mind. i plus one j. All right, so we need to find the line integral over c sub three of f dotted with dr. All right, so that is, remember that's t to the negative two-thirds. So when you dot that with t to the four-thirds, you're going to get t to the two-thirds. So it's one-third times one-half is one-sixth t to the two-thirds plus, we need to dot one-fourth t to the two-thirds with one. So that's just one-fourth t to the two-thirds. That's all dt. So a sixth and a fourth, that's going to be two plus three, that's going to be five-twelfths. So that is the integral from zero to one of five-twelfths t to the two-thirds dt. All right, so that's going to be 5 twelfths. Add 1 to the power, that becomes 5 thirds. So divide by 5 thirds or multiply times 3 fifths. t to the 5 thirds evaluated from 0 to 1. The 5's cancel out. 3 and the 12, that's 1 fourth. So it's one-fourth 
times 1 minus 0, so that again equals 1 fourth. So the work done by the conservative vector field F is the same for each path. 